the Greens Machines Electric Walk Behind Tractor. For the people using the tractor, I have put together a video that I hope will entertain, and I would also like to show some of the techniques that I have learned from my many hours of use. This video should help others use the machine as efficiently as possible. Although the walk behind tractor is small, it is possible to build a road or cut a pad even when the ground is extremely hard and dry. The most important thing to remember is that the rippers in the back of the machine are the pick and the front loader is the shovel. By using the rippers and loader together, I am able to cut a pool pad in hard dry ground that could not be done with the loader alone. Whenever possible, I will always push the dirt as opposed to scooping and shuttling. A tractor will normally push twice as much material as it can shuttle. It will be important to keep the cut bank sloped so that the tractor can climb up the bank. I will also have water handy to keep my fill material moist so it will compact and bind as I follow it over the bank. Because the electric walk behind tractor has a low center of gravity, I am able to grade on a side hill without losing traction. This will be important when trying to keep a straight cut bank. It is amazing how much work the amount of energy it takes to run a blender can do. The primary purpose of plowing is to turn over the upper layer of soil, bringing fresh nutrients to the surface, while burying weeds and remains of previous crops, allowing them to break down. It also aerates the soil and allows it to hold moisture better. This definition came from Wikipedia. The ditch made by the plow is called the furrow. After the first furrow is completed, the wheel of the tractor will drop into the furrow. Use it as a guide. The plow will then follow and roll the next strip of soil into the furrow. The curved part of the plow that guides the dirt to the surface is called the moldboard. The lower part is called the share or bottom. The bottom of the plow will determine how deep the plow goes into the ground. If the plow is tipped up, it will go shallow. If the share is pointed down, then it will go deeper till it flattens out. 
usually three inches is all I need. I have done lots of snow plowing. I have a gravel driveway, so I always leave one half to one inch of snow on the driveway. On pavement, I go down to the road. The tractor does best with a foot of snow or less. And powder snow is the easiest to push because the tractor gets much better traction on powder. We have had about two feet of snow. I will usually try to plow before the snow starts to melt. My electric tractor is usually set up as a power wheelbarrow. From this configuration, it'll carry rocks, firewood, muck, or just about anything that needs to be moved. But when the garden needs plowing or the snow needs moving, the conversion from wheelbarrow to tractor takes about 15 seconds. The electric tractor carries approximately 340 ampere hours of stored electricity. The tractor has a 12 volt system, so just about anything made to run on 12 volts will work including a 12-volt inverter. By connecting a 12-volt inverter to any one of the batteries, I can run everything from computers to skill saws for many hours. The worker bee does the hard work while you walk and guide it.